just a quick video today. Uh, we've got a Manicastrol NI440DX Serpent 4000 UK, whichever you want to call it. Any difference is the channel knob, of course. Um, this one's come through from a, a subscriber of mine and um, a Dom. And uh, this has had a respray, I can tell straight away from the top surface. Nicely done, though. Nice and smooth and uh, very nicely done there. And it's had some new screws. Um, so we're gonna, what we're going to do for, for, for Dom, because he's, uh, uh, he's asked me to tune this up and to replace the relay and to provide him with a, power, a new power lead. Now I can do all of those things. If you've not already watched my videos on the making of the power plug for this radio, uh, go and watch that. It's in my uh, channel list. Uh, so I've got a, I'm going to supply him with a lead. And I make replacement relays for these as well, uh, because that will always go on these radios, no matter if it's working now, it won't be tomorrow, I'll tell you. <laughs> they don't last for long. And um, so we're going to do both those things today. We're first going to just, just quickly just uh, run some tests on it, just to see how it's performing, and then uh, we'll, we'll see how we pick the radio up. I'm not going to go through an in-depth uh, tune-up of this. Uh, it's just a quick video just to show you the, you know, the, the, the how much it will improve, hopefully afterwards after the tune-up, and also uh, replacing that troublesome relay. Now there's the resin printed power lead all made up. Let's plug it in and test it out. Right, we're on channel 20. It's going into transmit, which is something, which is good. And we're doing three watts. It's doing 0 0.31 microvolts for 12 decibels sign out. One, two. Uh, deviation's a bit low there, it's uh, just over 1.5. One, two. It's a bit low on transmit, it should be 27.79125. That's still well within spec, but we'll bring that up. We'll do that first before we do anything mode one two that's all working fine uh, volume knob at the top end's a bit scratchy uh, which we'll fix with a bit of cleaner just check the Roger beep oh, the channel 9 that's all good as well a little bit of corrosion on the underside of the speaker side um, always worth it if you go to the effort to respray the outside of the cases always treat that with something I've got a little bit of rust prevention uh, paint which I'll coat uh, that with just to stop that getting any worse right, the first thing I'm going to do is to to remove these troublesome relays if you've seen my other videos on these you'll see what a pain these can be and uh, with a bit of use they, they wear very quickly you start to get intermittent problems with the radio so I'm going to change that out and put in a uh, uh, one of these uh, new relays that I manufacture myself uh, if you've not already seen the video on these, uh, go and check out the channel and you'll see the video where I actually make these relays up and three, with a 3D printed case that slot in to replace the other ones. They're bigger, of course, uh, but that's just the way that they're made. If you go into the video, you'll see why they're like that. Because uh, you cannot buy, well you can, you can buy new old stock of these, but you're just putting in another problematic relay as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, yeah, we'll get that changed out first and then we'll start to do the tune-up with the new relay in. Here we go. Right, I set the VCO according to the wiring diagram and I've checked it on, on all channels to make sure it's transmitting and receiving and it is, so the relay is working fine. The VCO is set up as it should be. Um, now, I can't guarantee I'll get more power out of these. I tend to find with these, uh, they can sometimes struggle to get up to the full four watts, but I'll go through the front end here off camera and we'll see if we can bring it up. It was doing uh, three watts, so uh, hopefully we can bring it up a little bit. As suspected, the radio is still only doing three watts and um, should really get a bit more than that out of it. Now, there is a modification that you can do, um, which is totally reversible, which comes from the power switch here you see the orange wire here which connects to that resistor there it connects rather strangely to the top of that resistor there now if you short out that resistor r1 uh, and then you add a 39k resistor across r r19 
and change R24 to 100 ohm, apparently that pops the power up a little bit. Now, I wouldn't normally do a mod like this, but it's nothing nothing um, illegal about it. Um, the radio isn't doing uh, 4 watts, and I would think the customer would probably want it to do. So, um, I'm going to do it. Again, this is all totally reversible. Uh, anything that I remove, I'll, I'll hand to the customer anyway. So, if, if, if for whatever reason they did want to change it back, it's easily reversed. Resistor R1 connects in there. If you look at the other side of the board, and just to the with the reference number in the bottom right hand corner and you're looking at that point there which is R1 so de desolder it from there and just pop the orange wire straight in. The next thing is to add a 39k resistor across R19 and R19 is just down there we'll do that on the back of the board neat as we can. Again from the back right of the board R19 is there so you just want to bridge your resistor across these two points there you, you could of course uh, take the, that resistor out and replace it with the original one with uh, an equivalent uh, type in parallel. There we go, here's our bridging resistor across the back. And the last resistor to change is R24 there. It's pulling the base of the driver there down uh, from a 22 ohm, change it to a 100 ohm. And R24 can be found inside that can and get my camera to focus just down there. There's R24. We'll just change that out. There we go. There we go. It's uh, about 3.7 watts. It was about 2.9 before, so that's made quite a good difference. I did go through the, this uh, front end again here. And uh, yeah, that's made quite a difference to the transmit. So that's brought it up to as near as makes any difference 4 watts. So we'll just uh, crack on with the rest of the uh, the tune up. I'm not sure we're going to get much more out of receive, but uh, at least that's uh, that's now now you know. If you have one of these that's a bit low, and I have seen them under three watts before, and it is a bit frustrating. You should be able to get four, and uh, I will pop this on the uh, spectrum analyzer just to make sure we haven't introduced anything we shouldn't do. But um, yeah, that's a good improvement. One two, one two. There we go. That's the deviation sorted. There's low power transmit. That's all done. And we've got a little bit more. It's now doing 0.3 of a microvolt for 12 dB cyanide. There's the scratch adjusted. Goes out at 95, comes in at 100. Here we go. Bang on frequency. I'll just blast a little bit of switch cleaner in there. And just to uh, give the pots a clean. Never do it unless you really need to do it. Just put a little bit in the volume control. It's a little spot of the rust prevention paint across that rusty bit. As it's a nice factory mic, we'll just give that a quick service. Just take the back off the mic and uh, clean the contacts and just make sure that all of our connectors are good in the plug. The customer's also asked for some side wheels. I've got loads of these lying around, so a uh, suitably vintage set of side wheels going on as well. I don't use them, so um, yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I've not done any cleaning up of the front controls. They look they look all right. Um, could probably do with a little bit of a clean, but they're not too bad at all. Um, none of these switches needed cleaning. Like I say, you mustn't clean any of this unnecessarily. Only do it if it really needs it. Um, so that's looking pretty spiffing. And uh, it's just to do another quick quick. I'm just going to do another quick test of. Um, Things just to make sure it's okay and we've not disturbed anything and then we'll see if we can get hold of Mick for a test. It was originally doing 3 watts, it's now doing 3.7. Uh, receive was at 0.31, it's now at 0.29. Uh, deviation was low at 1.5, now it's at 2 to 2.5 and, and the frequency uh, is now 2779125, spot on frequency. Uh, gave the mic a little bit of a refresh as you saw and cleaned it up with some spray foam. People often ask what foam I use, so I'm going to show you. It's Servisol Foam Cleanser 30. Uh, not too expensive at all. Pick it up off eBay for about $5.99, something like that. And it's absolutely superb. It really does a very, very good job. And you won't run any risk because it's kind of water-based. 
of damaging anything if you use it on the fascias of the radios and things whereas if you use isopropyl alcohol or any kind of abrasive type solvents like that you will run that risk so got to be very very careful um okay yeah so um uh mick's been away hopefully he's back and we can do a test on this i'd like to test it before i send it back to the customer or viewer or i suppose they're both really and uh and then uh yeah it uh, it's another one bites the dust cracking radios uh, often overlooked i think sometimes because of the intermittent problems that these relays cause i'll be sending the little relay back to the customer and the two resistors that i've removed just in case he should wish to ever in the future return it back to factory uh i don't know why he would but there you go let's put a test sticker on the back of it and we'll just uh, cover that nasty little rusty spot with another little label there we go i'm sure, sure this will be good for another 40 years long after i've gone anyway all right it's a few days later and uh, mix should be about and uh, we'll give this uh, newly repaired and set up radio a good test uh, i think mick may well be using one of these at his end as well we'll find out on the video but he should come back shortly all right you can start recording now mick and uh i'll just keep this up right okay here we have a mana kestrel or you can call it an ni 440 dx whatever you like really can't you just they change they change the channel knob mick <laughs> i'm going to tell you what it is at this end because i think you guessed anyway so uh but uh, i know you like these radios but we, we won't let it skew your opinion if it sounds bad please let me know um uh, i wonder what it sounds like your end my channel one seems to be the quieter option today uh i wonder how you copy me over yeah, that's brilliant audio coming through, Paul. Really nice. So uh, I've got no complaints about that at all. It's nice and loud. That's brilliant audio coming through, Paul. Really nice. So uh, I've got no complaints about that at all. It's nice and loud and crisp. And uh, you'll see on the video, or should do, <laughs> how it's performing. But yeah, and I've got a 440 this end. Uh, it is on an extension speaker, an MSJ clear tone speaker, uh, which seems to uh, boost the audio a bit, and very little white noise this morning as well on the back, so uh, that's good call. Yeah, likewise, there's a little bit of white noise on the back of you, but it's just the normal local interference that I get here. That's all copied, Paul. It's um, very, very good. Fine. That's all copied, Paul. It's um, very, very good. It uh, sounds good, so that's a, a very good radio, your end. So, yes, I'll stop the video now this side and uh, wait for your... Uh, you connect the next radio up, Paul. Right, I hope you've learned something, and if you've got one of these old radios, it shows you there how you can just get a little bit more power out of it. So on the next video, we're going to be looking at uh, Barracuda radio, so uh, keep an eye on the channel for that. I've got a few more other videos popping up soon. Take care, and remember to like and subscribe. Catch you soon, 73.